This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. The Emergency Medical Minute is excited to announce that we are now offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits. This is accessible through our online course modules that can be accessed at www.emergencymedicalminute.org backslash CME dash courses, or simply by clicking on the link in our show notes and creating an account. Hello, good morning. We have bagels and a medical minute. <laughs> All right, this is recording number two, so it'll be a little bit quicker. All right, talk about an interesting case. A couple of weeks ago, or a couple of months ago, saw a 20-year-old female who was here for a second visit for a sore throat. She had sore throat, difficulty swallowing, difficulty speaking, and some ear pain. On her first visit, she was very afraid of needles, so she declined any IV medications, and they looked inside and felt like she had a peritonsillar abscess. And what do we normally do for a peritonsillar abscess? Stab it, right? So drain it. This is a little harder if the patient's refusing IV meds because not many people can tolerate getting stabbed, you know, with a big needle or an 11 blade scalpel without any meds. So the provider attempted, did their best to do an incision, said they really didn't get much return of anything, gave the patient some tortle and some clindamycin and sent them on their way. So came back 36 hours later, said it still really hurts look inside, sure enough, you know, looks like there's still a peritonsillar abscess and her O2 sats were 96%, blood pressure normal 113 over 63, temp of 98.4, heart rate of 93 and respiratory rate of 16. So what are we gonna do with her this time around? Same thing, basically convince her that she needs some IV meds. So anytime we have a bounce back, we have to scratch our heads and think, you know, is there something missing or something we need to do different? So we did convince her to get an IV and we got a CT scan, which had an interesting finding that we'll show you. But we'll take a slight detour and talk about management of peritonsillar abscesses because they're really painful. Uh, it kind of ranks up there, you know, poking someone's peritonsillar abscess. It's a hard area to numb, probably ranks up there with like getting an NG tube. You know, patients just don't love it at all. So there has been some data building that maybe you can just treat these people with antibiotics and that's all that they need. Um, so there's a study, the title was Comparison of Medical Therapy Alone to Medical Therapy with Surgical Treatment of Peritonsillar Abscess in 2018 that was done through Kaiser. Kaiser in California is nice because they have a centralized database and they have just tons and tons of patients. So they basically culled through their data retrospectively, found a ton of peritonsillar abscesses, and then winnowed it down to the ones that they just considered uncomplicated, meaning they weren't septic, they weren't you know, diabetic with a sugar of 500. They were just kind of a plain Jane vanilla peritonsillar abscess. And then they found some comparison groups. They found one that got what they define as their standard medical treatment only. And they define their medical treatment as a liter of D5 half normal saline, which is a little bit weird. We don't use that as an initial, initial fluid very often, but they got a liter of fluid. They got ceftriaxone plus clindamycin. So that's a little weird too. We often don't do both and um, then they didn't get an incision of any kind. And then they compared that to the, what they called the surgical group, which was patients that got the exact same thing, but prior to that, without a CT scan, they either got a needle drainage or they got a drainage with an ele a number 11 blade. And then they followed these people to see how they did. Um, they basically ended up with like 96 patients in the surgical arm and a random group of 211 in the non-surgical arm. And when they looked at it, they found that the outcomes were equivalent in terms of failure rate or statistically equivalent. It was like 6% compared to 8%. Patients got better and didn't require a further procedure 94% of the time in one group and 92% of the time in the other group. But they found that the patients that had a surgical incision missed more days of work and filled more prescriptions for opiates. So they basically had more pain and they missed more work and they're kind of suffered from their sore throat for a longer period of time. So this is data that suggests if we have an uncomplicated patient uh, that we don't have to stab them. They can just get the antibiotics and IV fluids and things like that. Now, back to our patient. We had an interesting finding on CT scan and I will direct you to my computer terminal over here. Anybody who wants to see? So just to orient ourselves to this CT, we've got, you know, so it's CTs oriented like the patient is lying on their back and their feet are coming out at us, right? Uh, there are the teeth up front, there's part of the spine back there, and the musculature, and we're looking at a slice through the tongue there, and Ian, what do we find there? An abscess? An abscess, yeah. 
<laughs> so that is a peritonsil abscess. But what are these little white guys right there? You shouldn't have like rocks inside of your abscess, right? So if you scroll up one, what does that look like for anyone? We'll ask Ian because he's experienced reading CTs. Like metal. metal. Yeah, it looks like metal. This is what we see like a patient has fillings or they have hardware. So this patient had failed to mention that she had a previous gunshot wound from many years ago. And after lying deep within her soft tissues of the neck, um, seemingly without a problem for many years, this foreign body became a nidus for a peritonsillar abscess. So she would not be considered an uncomplicated peritonsillar abscess. This is one that, you know, uh, this doesn't fit <laughs> yeah, this doesn't right. fit those criteria. She would have to go in and get that uh, surgically managed. So, yeah, I thought that was an interesting and unexpected case. It's like when patients tell us they have no medical problems and they've got a huge cabbage scar on their yeah. front chest, they take right? The blood thinner to thin their blood. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Health One Continental Division, and Swedish Medical Center for their financial contributions to the EMM. Donations from them and listeners like you make it possible for us to fulfill our mission of producing and spreading free medical education to the masses. If you enjoy our show, please consider making a one-time or reoccurring donation to help cover our operational costs and keep the EMM awesome. Click on the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you for listening.